In this video, I'll discuss editing the display properties of object styles in AutoCAD architecture. There's two different important aspects of editing object styles that you should think about. The first is more obvious, and that's plan view. It's normal for a floor plan to communicate graphically um, some basic level of design intent, for example, in the sense of wall hatch. These are the basic out of the box hatch patterns that Autodesk assigns to the wall styles that come with AutoCAD architecture. So this particular wall style is the CMU8 and it has kind of a diagonal cross hatch. And this wall style is the concrete 8 and it has kind of a simple concrete pattern. And then this is the standard stud 4 wall which has no hatch and then I have a standard wall style generic one at the bottom. If somebody glances at this plan, they're going to be able to easily tell that this is a concrete block wall and this is a stud wall, assuming that there's some, some type of legend on the plan based upon how the hatch is displayed in the wall style. Now, the wall hatch is driven normally by the wall style, but it is possible to also use display representations to edit the wall patterns as well. So if I change from medium detail, which is the standard floor plan view, to high detail, you'll notice that the hatch gets denser because high detail would be used in a floor plan that's at a larger scale, so the hatch pattern gets a little denser for that. On the other hand, if I go to low detail, then it turns off all the hatch because it's assuming a floor plan at a smaller scale, maybe 16th or something, to where you wouldn't want that hatch to be shown at all. The real important part of why I'm bringing this up is there's kind of three high hierarchical levels of editing the hatch in your walls. You have the overall display representation, which has the ability to override all the walls in your plan. You have the, wall, the styles individual settings by what you see now, where we have the block wall versus concrete versus stud. And then it is possible to override it for one specific wall. And that's not normally done very often because that's why we have wall styles is to kind of make them all look consistent. So you can do it, but it's not very common. You'd really want to. So those are three important ways to think about editing the display properties. Most of the time you're going to edit the wall style probably and already set up um, a pattern to look a certain way for each wall style in your drawing. But a lot of times companies will switch between display representations in order to make their plan print easily in a certain way. Like, for example, if you're printing a schematic design plan where you're really just talking about the overall layout of the rooms, you might want a generic hatch in all the walls to look consistent. So you might have a schematic design display representation that does that. And then you go back to the regular medium detail one when you're ready to move to technical drawings. That's a common way to use the display representation to where uh, you would have that option in addition to how it's set up in the style. Now the whole other uh, issue with display representations and objects is the surface patterns. If I look at this in an isometric view, you can see how the block wall looks like block. It has a running bond pattern. The concrete wall has this little texture that is supposed to look like concrete. And then the stud walls are a little more simple, generic. So you also have the surface patterns. So that's the other thing to consider. So now that I've really confused you, I've made a little chart here to help you to understand what I'm talking about with the hierarchy. So if you want to edit all the walls in the whole project, then you would edit your display representation. If you want to edit all the wall styles that use the same material, like my example with block, then you would edit the material definition and apply that to those wall styles. If you want to edit one wall style only, then you would edit the wall style's display properties. And if you want to edit only one wall, then you would edit the object display. So I'm going to go through these last three choices. The display representation will be a separate video because uh, that's a little bit more complicated. So you have a materials tab. So you can see how it says component CMU and then it has a specific material definition that's assigned. So this allows you to basically set up component of the wall actually is in terms of CMU 
and then control that overall in a global manner so that if you have a lot of different types of CMU walls, um, that material is going to be applied to all those different styles. So the advantage to using the materials is if you had three or four wall styles that were all the same material. For example, 8-inch uh, block and 12-inch block, and then maybe 8-inch block with furring on one side. You know, that could go on and on, furring on both sides and 12-inch with furring and all that. You could have eight different styles that all had block. So then anywhere that you had block, you would want it to look the same. If that's the case, then you would want to just assign a material here and let that drive how it looks on your plan because then if you decide you want to make the block look different, you only go one place to change that and that's the material editor rather than each separate wall style. Now in order to demonstrate the purpose for this, I've added a couple more walls. So now we have a block wall with furring and also a block wall with brick. So if I'm editing all the walls that use the same material and I want my concrete block to look different in terms of the hatch, then it only makes sense for me to edit the material definition and apply that to these three wall styles. So what I'm going to do is go, I can either get to it from my wall style. Or I can go to the manage tab on my ribbon and then the style manager. The style manager allows me to get to my material definitions. And then I can go to multi-purpose objects, expand that with a little plus, and then find the material definitions. Now I can expand that. And then uh, these are the materials that are currently loaded into my CAD file. So I can see that there is the masonry unit masonry, CMU stretcher running. That's the material that's applied to those wall styles right now. And the reason I know that is because I saw it earlier when we were in the wall style editor. So I could theoretically just edit this here if I wanted. What I usually like to do is make a duplicate version. So if I wanted to revert back to the original settings, I always have that option. Um, that makes me sleep a little better at night that if I screw up something, I can always revert back. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this and do copy and then over in the white area, I'll right click and paste. So now I have a number two version. On the general tab, I can change the name. I'll just uh, put a Jeremy on the end of that so it's easy to remember. Now on the display properties tab, uh, I can get to my edit button on the right. So these are already all checked here for the style override. This refers to the style of the material, not the style of the wall. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm just gonna hit the edit button on the right side and then now I'm editing the pattern that applies for that material, the CMU material. So I have the hatching tab. You can see plan hatch, surface hatch, and section hatch. So just like it sounds, the plan hatch relates to your hatch in plan view. Your surface hatch relates to the pattern that I showed you in isometric view, and your section hatch relates to the hatch as you'd see it in like a building section, for example. Let's say I don't really like this pattern. I can click on uh, the plan hatch and user double and then change this to a predefined and then browse for the pattern I want. And maybe I'll do something, maybe I'll just choose something like this and then uh, change my scale. Let's try 10 and see how that looks. When you have a pattern that is directional, you would want your orientation to be object. So then if you have a wall that's rotated to an angle like 45, you don't want your hatch to disappear. So then if you put it on object orientation, the hatch rotates with the wall so that it is always visible. So uh, I could change these other settings if I wanted, obviously. Uh, the layer tab allows you to assign layers and visibility, colors and line weights to those hatches as well. So you have the plan hatch there section hatch and surface hatch. Uh, again, you could customize that as much as you wanted. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, one option that a lot of people do is they'll assign a specific layer to some aspects like the hatch so that you could turn the hatch on or off by layer that way. And then you could also control the line weight easier um, overall in your project by having it set to a layer and then the line weight would be by layer. That's a very common solution. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. And then I just have to remember that I have created a new material. So now I just need to go and assign this material to the wall styles. So now I can hit OK. 
And then I would now edit the wall style and find my CMU component and choose my new material that I just assigned. And there's my hatch. It's a little close together. So obviously I'd probably want to go back and adjust the scale a little. Maybe it was better at 20 than 10. Now I have to edit these three different wall styles to assign that material. So you might be saying, what's the point in editing the overall material if I have to go and assign each one this way, but the point is that things don't stay the same when you're in the design world. The hatch will change perhaps. So now, now that I have that assigned to those wall styles, I could go back to my style manager and tweak it in that one spot in the material editor, and then it would trickle through all the walls of all the styles that include CMU. And that's especially valuable if you're working with a template, because then you can set up a template that has the materials assigned you want, but if you did need to change it, it'd be very easy to do. So that would be how you would handle uh, editing materials when you have multiple styles that use the same material. The same works true for my isometric view. Remember that was also visible there in my material definition, so if you wanted to change that pattern, you could also do that in the same manner. So I'm going to uh, start by editing the style. So I'm going to select this block wall style and do edit style. On the display properties tab, you have the plan line, which is kind of highlighted in bold. On the right end, you have a style override box. That's very important because if you just start editing by hitting the edit button on the very far right, then you're going to be editing the overall display representation, which means you're not editing this individual style at all. You're editing all the styles. So that may not be what you want to do. Most of the time when you want to edit the style, you would then check the box to create a style override. And then you're editing only this one wall style of CMU8. Once you um, have created that style override and you have the box checked, then you can use the edit button on the right. All right, so now let's talk about editing one specific wall style. So let's say that I decided this is still CMU, but maybe I want it to look different. So I'm going to now edit the style. Instead of using my materials tab, I'm going to use the display properties tab. So now I have my plan line, which is bold, and I'm going to create a style override for that individual style. So I'm going to check the box. And by default, you have this by material column checked. And that's important because that, or right now that's overriding whatever you were, whatever you would normally select here. So I'm going to uncheck the by materials so that now I'm taking charge of what I want this style to do in terms of the graphics. So you have boundaries. There's three here because there's three components in the wall: block, the airspace, and the chipboard. Well, the airspace or furring. And then uh, I have three hatches. So if I'm trying to edit the CMU hatch, I would edit hatch one CMU. I can turn the hatch on or off, change the layer, change the color. Does this look familiar? It's just like the material setup, but now I'm only making it to one wall style instead of all of them. So that's the difference. And then I have my hatching tab with the same abilities. I can uh, change my hatch here. I'm going to go ahead and change that just so you can see what's going on. Maybe I'll just choose a solid fill for this case. Um, I'll just leave it uh, orange, I guess, for now, just so you can see what's going on. So that editing ability is the same way as my material. I just have to uncheck the by material column here in order to override it. So now I can hit OK and OK and now I have applied that to only that one wall style. Just remember if you go back and need to edit things after you've applied an, a style override you don't want to uncheck this you want to just use the edit button on the right there. Alright, so now let's say that I want to override it for one specific wall. I'm going to make another copy of this so you can verify that I'm overriding. So now I have three walls of the same style. So I can select one of these and I'm going to right click and go to edit object display. You'll notice I have edit wall style there as well and that's what I used to do before the ribbon existed was use that. And now I'm going to do edit object display and here you can create an object override. So notice how you can also override which material is applied 
or you can use the display properties tab. So again, you have the option to use either materials or display properties. If I had a different material that I just wanted to apply instead of block, for example, for this specific wall, I could check the box here and then pick a different material. That would work. Like I could change it back to the original block pattern right there by picking that material. Now, on the other hand, if I use the edit um, or if I use the display properties tab, then I check the box for style override. And then again, I set up what I want here for that individual one object. I'm going to cancel this and then use the material in this case just to show you how that's working. So I'm changing it back to the original CMU material for this individual object. And if I'm going to use the material here, I do need to go back to um, create an object to override and check my by material box. I'll need to recheck these, otherwise it's not going to allow the material to apply. So if you're using the material, you got to make sure these are checked. The only reason they're not is because I just unchecked them in the style manager. So now I'm going to hit OK and OK. And now that has changed back to what it was. So I've updated my chart here just to review a little. So if you're editing all the walls of the same material, you want to work in the wall style editor materials tab and or the material styles, which you can get to in the style manager. And if you're editing only one style, then use the wall style editor and the display properties tab.